It's here, you guys. It's here. I've always wondered how 1984 started, right? Like, uh, I, I haven't read the book in, in, a, in, a, in a pretty long time. Um, but, uh, if, if I remember correctly, they, they don't particularly go into the details of, of how they landed into dystopia. And, uh, what's cool about real life is, is we get to, we get to kind of see that, right? Like we get to live in creating a fucking authoritarian fascist dystopia in real time. How exciting is that? We get to live through that, you guys. We get to live through a bunch of people saying that a crypto fascist is going to bring freedom to everybody. Oh, man, what an exciting time to be alive, isn't it? So, uh, there's a new there's a new categorization of domestic terror uh, that has just been put out. So I'm going to share that with you guys. I'm sure some of you guys have seen this uh, on the old Twitter sphere and all that. Cool. Okay, so that that did work. Per, that worked pretty well. Okay, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to share the the image, um, and I would have had to do other shit. But here it is. We found it. The image is here. So I'll kind of read what uh, a little bit a little bit of uh, what it says, and we'll go through some of the shit. So it says domestic violence. Extremists are U.S.-based actors who conduct or threaten activities that are dangerous to human life in violation of criminal laws of the United States or any state, appearing to be intended to intimidate or coerce a civilian population and influence the policy of a government by intimidation or coercion or affect the conduct of, the, uh, of a government by mass destruction, assassination, or kidnapping. As per the definition of domestic terrorism in uh, U.S. Code 22331, mere advocacy of political or social positions, political activism, use of strong rhetoric, or generalized philosophical embrace of violence tactics may not constitute violence. Philosophical embrace of violence tactics may not constitute violent extremism and may, uh, const uh, may be constitutionally protected. While a majority of DVEs fall into one threat category, some draw upon and, or are inspired by ideological memes found in other threat categories. Okay, so a couple couple of quick things, just by just by the top of this, right? Uh, appearing to be intended to intimidate or coerce a civilian population. That's the cops. Is isn't that just the cops that you just described? American police, because <laughs> that's all they do. They intend to intimidate and they coerce a civilian population. That's the police. <laughs> uh, and influence the policy of a government by intimidation or coercion. That's lobbyists. That's like the Israel lobby does this all the time. <laughs> right? Like that's that's exactly what they'd watch the lobby. Watch the documentary The Lobby. Or better yet, if you want to come to my show, the virtual show on June 25th. Uh, that's that I, I'm going to talk about exactly that thing. Influence of policy of a government by intimidation or coercion. That's what the Israel lobby does. <laughs> or affect the conduct of a government by mass destruction, assassination, or kidnapping as per the de definition of domestic terrorism in U S code two, three, three, one. That's all of the intelligence communities. That's what the intelligence community does last year. <laughs> The U.S. Marshals were doing this when they were kidnapping random people in Portland and various other cities. You just described your own government as domestic violent extremists. <laughs> so we have the police, the lobbyists, the lobbyists, right? The police, the lobbyists, and the intelligence community all described by each point of this thing. But that is not who they are talking about, friends. That is not who they're talking about. So, uh, what? Who? Who are they talking about? Right? It's. It's. They're. They're clearly not going to incriminate themselves, even though they just described uh, the cops, the lobbyists, and the intelligence community as domestic violent extremists, by definition of the U.S. Code for Domestic Terrorism. 
So, uh, it says racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, DVEs with ideological agendas derived from bias often related to race or ethnicity held by the actor against others, including uh, a given population. You could just say white supremacists. That could be something that you could just fucking say. You could just say white supremacists. That's not on here. You say, oh, racially and ethnically motivated. Yeah, but you guys don't do anything about it. That's also the cops. <laughs> We've we've established cops are domestic, vi domestic violent extremists twice in this document already. Animal rights slash environmental violent extremists DVEs seeking to end or mitigate perceived cruelty, harm, or exploitation of animals, or perceived exploitation or destruction of natural resources. Uh, and the environment. So the fossil fuel industry, the fossil fuel industry does that. It's not perceived. We have eyes and other senses that help us f very clearly see that our addiction to fossil fuels is destroying the planet. There's no perception. Abortion related extremists, uh, DVEs with ideological agendas to in, in in support of pro life or pro choice beliefs. So let's just we'll throw we'll throw both of them in there, but we're not really gonna go after the pro lifers. When the fuck has have pro lifers actually been ever like imprisoned? And I've I've never seen that happen. They got their fucking crazy ass posters outside all the time, and they harass a bunch of people. My sister used to get harassed by them a bunch when she used to work uh, at a at a particular uh, uh, research lab connected to a a, a, a women's hospital. And she used to get harassed like it's, but they don't do anything to stop them like the cops don't even show up when it's a pro uh pro-life rally which is a very ironically named ideology so this is the this is this is i think the the the, the meat of it right this that which is i are oddly in the middle uh it says anti-government slash anti-authority violent extremists dves with ideological agendas derived from an anti-government or anti-authority sentiment include opposition to perceived economic, social, or racial hierarchies or perceived government overreach, negligence, or Ill Ill illegitimacy. You can't just throw the word perceived in there and ignore the fact that you're actually fucking doing it. It's not perceived. We're fucking living it, assholes. <laughs> Stop saying perceived. It's not perceived. It's factual. You are throwing the word perceived in there so you can just ignore all of it. That's why you're throwing the word perceived in there. Uh, militia violent extremists, DVEs who take overt steps to violently resist or facilitate the uh, overthrow of the U.S. government in support of their beliefs that the U.S. government is purposely exceeding its constitutional authority and is trying to establish a totalitarian regime, uh, oppose many federal and state laws and regulations, particularly those related to firearm ownership. So basically, this is a a thing that says we're going to be a totalitarian regime and we are going to overstep constitutional authority and we are going to try to disarm the populace and y'all just got to be okay with it right it's it's the same thing of like perceived government over no there is government overreach we're, the next segment is going to be about government overreach it's not perceived it just is and when we call it out you can't just be like well that's your point no it's not our point of view it just is that's what you're doing. This is the one that I was just like, oh, here we go. Here we go, thought police. Here's a, this is anarchist violent extremists. DVEs who oppose all forms of capitalism, corporate globalization, and governing institutions which are perceived as harmful to society. It's again not perceived. Just cut that fucking word out. <laughs> But basically, this is anti-capitalists and socialists. As I say, yeah, these guys are violent extremists now. Go figure, the guy that bragged about, quote, beating the socialist just fucking criminalized it. Made it a form of violent extremism. So now they basically did, uh, wrote, wrote a thing that you can't criticize capitalism, no matter how destructive it is. Oh, by the way, that's your perception. That's not what. That's not what's actually happening. Really? Then why did 
why do, why does the the most capitalist country of all time have such high levels of poverty? Why why does the cap the, the greatest capitalist country of all time, America, have so many people being evicted out of their homes, so many people living out in the streets, so many people living paycheck to paycheck on the verge of getting kicked out of their homes? People that can't afford health care, people that are on med uh, that, uh, that that have medical debt despite the fact that they have health insurance. So the fact that they have three jobs, they're still barely making it. That's not perception. That's reality. Your perception is to ignore this shit. Sovereign citizen violent extremists. DVEs who believe that they are immune from uh, government authority and laws. So politicians. So politicians. And cops. There's three points where we've just enabled cops as do fucking domestic violent extremists. And one thing that points out politicians, one thing that points out lobbyists, one thing that points out fucking fossil fuel industries. But no, let's loop in fucking anti-capitalists that criticize capitalism with valid critiques of capitalism and socialists. Let's put that in there. And then let's encourage people to fucking rat out your socialist friends. <clears throat> all other domestic th uh, terrorism threats. They ran out of categories, so they're just like everybody else then. DVEs with ideological agendas that are not otherwise defined uh, under one or <laughs> one of the other domestic terrorism threat categories, including a combination of personal grievances and beliefs with potential bias related to religion, gender, or sexual orientation. Again, they're just ignoring it. So it's, it's basically like anybody that calls out racism and, 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 and discrimination in this country might be a, a potential domestic violence extremist. And, um, and this is this is the false um, way of presenting America as somebody that a country that champions human rights. When historically they've never championed human rights. This is a country that has blatantly violated human rights nonstop for the pay, sake of profits. Nonstop. That's what this country is fucking built on. And this this document right here, this recategorization of domestic violent extremists is basically America coming out and saying, hey, we're going to ignore all our history and then we're going to write this law and make this the 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 new fucking, you know, uh, the, the 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 new norm, the new narrative that we're throwing out there that everybody has to adhere to. And you, you, you can believe in this and this and this. Oh, by the way, we're also the country of freedom. But you have to believe in this, this, and this. And if you believe in anything outside of that, you're a domestic violent extremist. You're, quote, a DBE. This is authoritarianism. This is fascism. This is a constitutional violation. Because you can't tell people that they can't hold certain beliefs. And you're categorizing them as violent. Dude, most of the socialists and communists that I know, and, and I'm, I'm sure you guys watch a bunch of the socialists and communists that I know as well, don't call for a violent revolution. We know that that's probably what's going to happen because the state, the government, the United States government is going to thrust violence upon us using measures like what we're looking at on the screen right now. And then when we defend ourselves, they go, oh, look how violent. No, we're defending ourselves, assholes. You guys are the ones that, st that instigated the violence. Oh, but it gets better, folks. Oh, but it gets better. Uh, the Intercept just reported that uh, they are teaching um, Navy... Um, what's the what's the what's the word here? I'm going to look at the way that they phrase it. Uh, it's a training document, a Navy counterterrorism training document. Yeah, so so there's people that are being trained in the Navy for counterterrorism has equated socialism and anarchists with neo Nazis. So now, people in the Navy that are being trained to combat terrorism, domestic or otherwise basically going to come after socialists and equate them with neo-Nazis, which is 
nowhere near the fucking same thing. Because I'm not like, hey, you know what? I think the worker should seize the means of production to be paid the uh, a, 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 a living wage, if not more, because life is not just about paying your bills. It's 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 about being able to enjoy uh, what 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 this world has to offer. Uh, I think healthcare should be a human right and everybody should just be granted healthcare. I think capitalism is a toxic economic system. Oh, that guy's basically a neo-Nazi. Nowhere in that have I tried to fucking shave my head and carve a swastika into my skull. Nowhere. You know what's funny about socialism is, well, this is not the funny, this is, this is the thing about socialism. Socialism is about equality. It's about creating a fair life for everybody, Right. And helping you achieve what you want to achieve in life. That's what that that's what that system and way of life is about. It's for everybody. And neo-Nazism is about a very specific group of people being up at the top. Being able to enjoy the fruits of life. And everybody else has to be in servitude to those groups of people. They're, they are, without a doubt, completely opposite fucking ideologies. And they'll believe it. They'll believe it. There's gonna and there's gonna be a crop of fucking uh, you know Navy counterterrorism kids that eventually are gonna become retirees of this program and are gonna come out and realize all the atrocities that America has committed using them as a way to fucking do it and you're gonna create a whole new wave of disillusioned veterans. So here, I, I, want, I want to show you guys that too. So let's, let me share the screen here. So here's the, here's the, the sheet, the training guide. There's a couple questions, right? So question number one is, uh, which of the basic ter uh, terrorist organizational structures is categorized by uh, distributed authority, redundant key functions, and a cell structure that allows... Uh, anonymity of individuals operating throughout the organ organizational spectrum. Oh, it's the CIA. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure that's what you got. Uh, question two. Difficult to identify and presenting a formidable challenge to law enforcement and intelligence agencies, this type of terrorist shares ideology and goals with a terrorist organization but does not communicate with any of them as he fashions his political aims and commits act of terrorism. I don't know if that's a question or just like a statement that's being made about whoever he is in this notion. So here, here's the uh, anarchists, socialists, and neo-Nazis represent which terrorist ideological category? I don't know because the first two have nothing to do with the last one and the first two aren't really a terrorist organization. Those are, I, those are, those are philosophies and ways of life. Those are economic philosophies and ways of life. That are more about equality and fairness than they are about terrorism. Blank are typically individuals or groups that are sympathetic to the announced goals and intentions of terrorist organizations, but are not committed to take enough action. Oh, it's the Democrats. The Democrats are typically individuals or groups that are sympathetic to the announced goals and intentions of the terrorist organization, but are not committed to take enough action. It's the Democrats. I mean, hell, we have a white supremacist president. That's what Joe Biden is. Let's let's be honest about who he is. Build Back Better is just blue MAGA. <laughs> That's all it is. It's the same shit. It's the same philosophy. It's the same concept. It's just different words. Joe Biden is a white, he's sided with segregationists. He has, he has been anti-black this entire time. He wants to fund the police to beat the shit out of black people even more. He wants to give them more money. For what? Train them with what you have. They have an astronomical amount of money. And I have people telling me if we defund the police, people are just going to be getting robbed and raped on the streets. And it's like, that's not... I live in a community that I, you know, I, I know so I brought this up before and I know some folks in the comments have um, have addressed this uh, as, as as well. Uh, but I see, uh, you know, my police department in my neighborhood 
once, maybe twice a week. Uh, I go for walks, I go to the store, I go, you know, now I'll be going to an open mic at least once a week. I'll be walking home at 1130 and I don't feel nervous about doing that. And I don't see a police presence and I don't think they're getting billions of dollars either because it's a small community with a small police force. Now, when I go into the city, I feel less safe because of the cops. Because there's a cop on every block. And they're just waiting for some shit to go down. And looking the way that I do. And dressing the way that I dress. They don't like me. So I don't feel safe with cops around. I feel safe with the fucking weirdos that walk around the street. Because I know if something goes down, those weirdos are going to come help. I don't think the cops will. Or if they do, if the whoever's if I'm getting attacked or mugged is white, then they're not. I'm a bearded brown dude. Their fucking head says I'm the fucking perpetrator. Yeah, I, this is this is something that uh, rapper Awkward has uh, uh, posted about Joe jo old, old Joey B's. Uh, so let's share that. This is again, I did a whole video about him talking down to um, black civil rights activists. And I guess this just resurfaced. So whoever this talking head is was like, whoa. And it's like, yeah, man, I already a bunch of us co fucking covered it. it and it, it's it's a hard fucking watch. See, what wait, the this mainstream is media appears to be suppressing. Maybe because it sounds about as racist as it gets from Joe Biden. This country is doomed. It is doomed, not just because of African-Americans, but because <laughs> this country is doomed, not just because of African-Americans. Although black people sure are doomed in this country. Boy, we really need a white supreme uh, white. You get it. <laughs> what? By 2040, this country is going to be minority white European. You hear me? Minority white European. Does it sound like he's warning people about that? Right? He's warning people. It's going to be minority. We're going to be in the minority. We got to stop the blacks and the browns from fucking our women. How can we? We got to stop them from doing it. If they're, if they're be, I've heard, I've heard the black spunk. Can, can travel miles and miles. Why is he so mad about that? He sounds so fucking angry about that. And this is after 45 minutes. Everybody's talked and presented their arguments and presented like, hey, this is what we need and this is how you can help the black community and and uh, what we can do to go tell the, the black community that you're going to be on our side. And and his response to that is, yeah, we got to stop black people and white people from fucking because white people are going to be the minority. What the fuck is wrong with you? But this gets ignored by liberals. This gets ignored by Democrats. OK, let's keep going. Sorry. It's just such an insane fucking clip. And you guys are going to have to start working more with Hispanics. Oh, no, not Hispanics. Whoa. What? Who gives a shit? Guess what? Most of them probably work with Hispanics and are fine with it. And you know what they don't point out? Boy, howdy, I'm working with Hispanics. The more you call out that you're working with an ethnic group, the more racist you also sound. <laughs> Who make up a larger portion of the population y'all do. Oh, no. Now, folks, what in the world does that mean? Clip the main. It means Joe Biden is a fucking racist and has been and always will be. That's why he's not ending the war on drugs. What he's trying to prevent is um, is the rise of another uh, Black Panther organization is a rise of another, uh, you know, civil rights movement, is a rise of another Black Lives Matter movement. We just fought fascism with, with more fascism. That's all you replaced it with. 
Remember how all of us were saying that that's what's going to happen with the Biden administration? Pay attention. Be, pay attention to those details because it's all in that. There it is. That's from November. I broke that shit down. There's like it's like a two hour live stream that I did breaking all that down. Uh, I don't know if it's on Rockfin. I think it's on Rockfin, but uh, I know it's on YouTube. He he blatantly came out and said it. He's really mad about the fact that white people are going to be a minority by 2040. Are we bringing back sterilization programs too so that white people can stay the dominant in this country, Joe? Is that where you're headed? Because this is straight up fucking 1917 shit. This is the Espionage Act. The Espionage Act criminalized socialists in this country. That's why Eugene Debs, who was who was a, 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 a union leader, uh, created the American Railway Union uh, and the front runner for the, uh, the, the Socialist Party of America, was in prison. Also for saying anti-war shit. That's the other thing. Socialists are vehemently anti-war. So now you can't criticize the military because if you do, you're a socialist and you and, and we have to rat you out and send you to prison. Probably a deprogramming camp of some sort. Part of this is the fact that they have to admit that white supremacy is bad. Because, because it is. <laughs> but it took them like forever to be like, yeah, but... It's bad, but they want it. So they're like, all right, what else can we do to kind of fuck with it? Well, we'll throw socialists in there and we'll throw communists back in there and we'll throw anybody that wants to be critical of capitalism in there too. And we'll equate them all as white supremacists. It's the same thing what Israel did, right? Using a lobby, changed the definition of anti-Semitism. No, it's more about criticizing Israel than it is about hating Jewish people. It, according to that, I mean, you know, Hitler, not an anti-Semite. He never criticized Israel because Israel never existed. According to the State Department's definitions. That's where we are. You're, you're controlling ideology. You're controlling what, how people get to think, what decisions they get to make. This is not police shit. And guess what? It's coming under a Democratic administration, not a Republican one. And guess what? A lot of us kept fucking warning you, warning the liberals about this. And I would wager to bet, I don't want to be this fucking cynical and pessimistic, but I would wager to bet it, 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 in, in real terms that the Democrats are going to ignore this, just like they ignored the fact that he screamed for 22 minutes at black civil rights activists. They ignored it. They didn't give a shit. They didn't say anything about it. And that's because we elected a fucking white supremacist into office. And you're surprised when he does white supremacist shit. You're surprised. We, we elected a, another fascist into office. We replaced fascism with more fascism. What do you think is going to happen? Let's look at your comments. All right, I gotta find. There's there's a lot of love happening in the comments for a second, and then we get into this is horrifying from Holly. <laughs> uh, Biden is Big Brother. Yeah, he's he's turning into Big Brother. He's the mouthpiece for Big Brother. Um. Yeah. And Holly says, working three jobs ain't that uh, ain't that America. Yeah, it's very uniquely American. Uh, Holly says, we will not comply. Absolutely. We should not comply with this. The MOVE organization, uh, who was bombed by the Philadelphia Police Department for being black environmentalists, um, said, uh, you know, just because a law is a law doesn't make it right. This is not right. And if anybody that abides by this law, uh, you're a bootlicking traitor and you don't believe in the American Constitution. And you're, you're like your body. You, you're you are basically just replacing one fascist strong man with another.
uh, Cynical Girl says, I thought there was more context to that, and they had uh, disproven this version uh, of of uh, of the of the video clip. Uh, Holly says, I feel a lot less safe feel it seeing cops. He so he's very condescending. Uh, also says, yeah, Holly points out the phrase, I don't want I don't want my kids to grow up in a racial jungle. That was something that he yeah, again, a lot of people just really ignored that. Um ignored the fact that he said, I don't want my kids to grow. But here's the thing is he has said so much crazy shit that and and none of it he has apologized for. He's just like, hey. I, that that was so long ago. Sure, I still hold those beliefs, but fuck, fuck you. Fuck you for calling me out on it. That's his attitude towards it. Cynical Girl says, elected is such a sketchy term. I know, American elections are uh, a dumpster fire, but, uh, you know, for, for the sake of the argument, we'll say that. Uh, <laughs> But but you know it's it's ridiculous. He he has been put into power. I mean, most most countries that are that that have a, a democracy of some sort don't have the electoral college. They still have uh, one person, one vote. Whereas in America, it's one person, one vote, kind of sorta, until we get to the electoral college, which is an insane system. Um. Yeah, the unedited version is equally as cringe. Uh, oh, of the of that, yeah, it's it's a it's a very it's it's fine up till the last twenty two minutes. I mean, what, what everybody points out is important details that this administration should have taken to heart, but he just spends twenty two minutes calling a bunch of black civil rights activists assholes for calling him out. It's it's genuinely the, one of the worst fucking things I've ever seen. And liberals and Democrats fucking ignored it. Kind of nuts. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.